The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went down to Capernaum, a town of Galilee. He taught them on the Sabbath, and they were astonished at his teaching, because he spoke with authority. In the synagogue, there was a man with the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out in a loud voice, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Be quiet, come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down in front of them and came out of him without doing him any, any harm. They were all amazed and said to one another, What is there about this word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And news of him spread everywhere in the surrounding region. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters of Christ, welcome to Redemptor Mundi. In today's Gospel, my dear brothers and sisters, we heard of a story of a man who was released by our Lord Jesus Christ from the bondage of the evil spirit. Jesus casting out the evil spirits is told several times in the Gospels. And it is really an integral part of his ministry, of his earthly ministry. We know, for example, some instances or some occasions where Jesus, our Lord, cast out the evil spirits. For example, this demoniac who lived in the graveyard who introduced himself like this. My name is Legion, for we are many. My name is Legion, for we are many. Very ironic. One, yet many. My, and yet we are. So that is what the evil spirit can do to us. It destroys us. It confuses us. We also remember the instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ to his disciples when he sent them for a mission. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. So during his earthly ministries, our Lord Jesus Christ did not only cure the physical sickness or infirmities of the people, but most especially the spiritual ones. Most especially the spiritual ones. So, in the midst of this spiritual warfare, in the midst of this battle with the evil spirits, we learn that we have to take sides. Which side are we taking? We learn also that we have to be wise in taking these sides. Is it the side of the evil one or it is the side of God? If it is the side of the evil one, the word that we speak is an empty word. It is a word without authority. It is a word without love and truth. It is a word of lie. That is why we heard from this gospel, this man, possessed by the evil spirit, who said, I know who you are, the Holy One of God, but it is a lie. Why? Because an evil one will never humble itself to worship the Lord. The knowledge of God only stops there. It does not translate into actions. I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But there is love within. There is no good intention. 
So if it is a word of lie, it is an empty word. And if it is an empty word, it is a word that kills. It kills someone's character. It kills someone's beautiful relationship. It kills someone's career. The side of the evil one. The side of the evil spirit. But if you choose the side of God, His word is full of authority. Why? Because it is a word of truth. It is a word of love. He does not lie. He is true to His promise. When He promised to save us, He would come to us. He would be one of us. He would suffer with us. He would die on the cross to rescue us, to save us from the evil one. He does not lie. He is true to His promise. And His word is not a deafening voice. It is not a noise. It is a voice of love. It is a voice of life. It is a gentle voice. It is a gentle voice. And His Word does not kill. His Word heals. His Word heals us from our brokenness. His Word heals us from our sickness. His Word heals us from our sins. So in this spiritual warfare, my dear brothers and sisters, which side do you take? The side of the evil one or the side of God? Every word you say, do you mean it? Every I love you, do you mean it? Every promise you make to remain faithful to your vocation, to remain faithful to your spouse, to remain faithful to your loved ones, to remain forgiving, do you mean it? When you say you know Christ, do you say it because you truly love Him? with your entire love because remember even the evil spirit says I know who you are you are the Holy One of God so do you mean it when you say you know Christ do you mean it because you really tr truly love him with your entire life every word you say does it heal or does it kill the words you say to the people? Do they encourage them? Do you inspire them? So my dear brothers and sisters, in this Mass, we ask the Lord, we ask the Holy Spirit to protect us. And we pray, the Spirit of God, protect me inspire me the spirit of god protect me sustain me in your love 